Well, sharks, major predators in the ocean, right? But now they're becoming prey to something much bigger. We're still talking about the topic of climate change here. That's right. In fact, they could lose up to 70% of their habitat by the end of the century. That's according to a new study released this week by the Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution. Cameron Braun, the lead author on that study, joins us now. Cameron, thanks so much for being with us. Now, tell us a little bit about how you found this out. What species of fish did you study and how were you able to gather that information? Yeah, you know, we were really interested in um, supporting our, our local fishers and fisheries and all the infrastructure around that uh, going into the future. And, and so our question was, you know, how will climate uh, impact the fish that these communities rely on? And so um, we took a lot of NASA satellite data, such as sea surface temperature, uh, and we used a modeling technique that allows us to uh, essentially project into the future what we think the habitat changes might be for some of these important species like sharks, uh, tunas, and billfish like swordfish. And from what you can gather from some of those images that you're gathering, how significant is the loss that we're seeing as of right now? Yeah, as you said at the top, you know, the these losses are up to sort of 70% by the end of the century. Um, in fact, we're actually seeing some of those changes that are already underway. A good example of that is the bluefin tuna that many people uh, know and love. Uh, by the end of the century, we're expecting that they will shift their habitat as much as uh, about 200 miles to the north of kind of their core distribution uh, that we see now. And we've actually seen that move about uh, a third of the way already. Wow. wow, that is crazy. Yeah. So what are some of the biggest threat threats that we're talking about in terms of um, causing this shift and habitat loss? Yeah, I mean, the, the threat is, um, you know, from a, a number of different aspects of the ocean environment, the, the easiest, the simplest one, right, is temperature. We're seeing that right now uh, in our ocean today, right? You guys were mentioning how how warm it is out there. Uh, obviously, temperature is a, is a major driver of species and where they are and, and where they can and can feed. Um, and so this is temperature is a, a major driver uh, of these changing distributions. You know, you mentioned the bluefin tuna at the end of the century adapting and moving, you know, its habitat. Are we seeing the same thing with sharks? Are they adapting? Are there any species that aren't adapting? Yeah, you know, the 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 word adaptation is interesting because that's probably the one thing uh, in this story that we just don't have a good handle on. We as the science community don't really understand uh, very well how these animals might adapt, right? How they might um, change how they can live in environments that they currently live in today, uh, how that might change as we know it by the end of the century. So adaptation is a really tricky thing for, mm -hmm. for you know, sort of how these animals will deal with these changes. Interesting. Yeah. Well, time will so, tell, I guess. We'll just have to keep figuring it out. Yeah, and we're going to just have to keep studying how it changes. But, you know, sometimes it's hard as humans for us to really dig into a subject and feel like we care about it and so we can relate it to how it impacts us. So how do we see these changes relating to uh, us here back on dry land? Yeah, that's uh, that's a really great question. Um, you know, for sure, these changes will impact the the fish that you see in this in the seafood markets, for example. Um, but you know. Uh, a lot of this feels really doom and gloom, right? Doing climate science, but I, I think for for people, it's also an opportunity. Where um, you know these techniques that we use, these um, these results that we find about climate impacts to these animals, um, is a projection, right? We're thinking about the future, and so what that means is while we should take action now to, for example, reduce our our carbon emissions. Um, you know, it, it, this is an opportunity for us to uh, kind of get ahead of the curve a little bit and make, for example, management decisions that will continue supporting our fisheries under climate change so we can still have, you know, seafood on our plates and still have our, um, you know, our thriving coastal communities that rely on some of these species. Yeah, so important. Cameron Braun from the Woods Hole Oceanographic <laughs> Thank Institution. You. Thanks so, so much, much for joining us today. Oh, man, it, it's so I we can keep it. I know when you relate it back to you're not going to be able to get your favorite sushi right. or, you know, it seems little, but that's when people really start to pay attention. I like think how weird it is about fishing for some of these, you know, fish in the Gulf Stream current up by like uh, Greenland or Iceland. And right. You're like, this is where we're catching this. This yeah. is so different.